Hey, this is Arthur Hill, Chief Technical Strategist at TrendInvestorPro.com. You are tuned in to Next Level Charting. Thanks very much for joining us. So today we're going to go over the Trend Composite Indicator. It's part of the ACP plugins available at, on, at Stock Charts here. And basically we've got five indicators, and I'm going to show you how to chart these indicators and what they're telling us. And then I'm going to show you how to chart the trend composite and the signals that it generates. So last week, I went through the characteristics of trend following strategies. And basically, you ride the trend until it reverses. You can consider profit targets or profit taking along the way. You have around a 40% win rate, which means 60% of your trades are not going to be profitable. So keep this in mind. Before we start with the trend composite indicator, I want to show you where you can find more information about the ACP plugins and also Stock Charts ACP. If you go to the top right, you'll see a help link, and that will take you to the support center. And that help link is at the top right of every web page. And if you scroll down, you'll see a number of topics that you can choose from. And I'll go to the topics for Stock Charts ACP. It's under Charting Tools. And then you'll get an overview of everything related to ACP. And on the right, you have some links for the outline, and there's a link for the ACP plugins. And you can read about the basic plugins, and the, there's a link to learn more about these plugins. There's an overview, and then on the right, you can see there's the Trend Investor Pro indicator edge plugin and then you have information on pricing and you can read about this plugin where i wrote an article with charts describing the indicators and the signals that i look for using these indicators and today we're going to go over the trend composite which is an aggregate signal for five trend following indicators so here's a chart of QQQ with the trend composite indicator, and it's not perfect by any means, but it does help you stay on the right side of the trend. So basically it ranges from plus five to minus five, and then it makes steps in odd numbers. So it goes to minus three, minus one, plus one, plus three, plus five. So if you're at plus three, that means there are four bullish signals and one bearish signal. If you're at plus one, there are three bullish signals and one bearish signal. And on the left-hand side, you can change the indicator settings by clicking the little pullout there. And there you can see Trend Investor Pro, Trend Composite, and you click on the settings icon. And you can change these settings to suit your time frame. Now, I've got everything set at around 125 days because that covers a six-month time frame. My sweet spot for trend is three to six months as far as catching a trend early enough without having too much lag. And then you can close that to open it back up, close that, and then close this by clicking it again. And then on the bottom right, there you see the plugin icon, and you can learn more about the plugins on ACP there. So now let's look at the individual indicators that drive this trend composite here. So this first indicator is the moving average trend and it's basically the trend of the moving average. Is the moving average trending up, rising, or is the moving average trending down, falling? And the way I measure that is by applying a five period rate of change to a moving average. So here I've got 125 period moving average. I chose simple because I like it simple. Five period rate of change. The upper reference is at 3%. The lower reference is at minus 3%. And those are there in case you want to put a bullish and bearish threshold on your upturns and downturns to avoid whipsaws. So there you can see Walmart turning bullish there in June when it got above 3% actually maybe even in late May, and staying bullish. And even here in this decline, it didn't go below minus three, and it stayed bullish. And there you can see 
it got positive again and expanded. So it's been in an uptrend more or less this entire time with these little red zones marking slight downturns in the moving average. The next indicator is the Commodity Channel Index. And normally people associate this indicator with momentum and overbought and oversold. You go below minus 100 or minus 200, you're oversold. Uh, but I'm turning it around. And Donald Lambert, the creator of the Commodity Channel Index, also noted this type of signal. When you get a surge above, say, plus 100, and that can be the signal that you're on the start of an uptrend. And that's the way I've designed this indicator here, CCI close. And it's based only on closing prices. Normal CCI uses the intraday high and low, the typical price, in fact. But I'm just using closing prices. 125 days, which covers around six months. The upper reference, which is the green line there, is set at 100. The lower reference is set at minus 100. That's the red line. And then you can see the signals. So it turns green when you get a bullish signal. This is Netflix. So you can see Netflix had this big thrust and a bullish signal there in 2016. And it stayed bullish until this sharp decline here. Now with trend following indicators, which all of these are, you're not going to catch the exact bottom or the exact top. You're trying to catch the meat of the trend. And you're not trying to second guess your signals. Everything's pretty cut and dry. And you're also going to get whipsaws. For instance, you can see here, you got a bullish signal here in January, March 2019, but it resulted in a bad signal. You had lost money on that trade, but you would have been out during this decline here. And then you got a bullish signal there in January 2020, and it stayed bullish even during that March decline, Netflix stayed on a bullish signal there. And so it's still on an uptrend as far as this indicator is concerned. The next indicator is the Bollinger Band indicator. And again, I've got the band set at this 125 level to capture six months. And there you can see 125 and they're one standard deviation above and below the close, which is the, or sorry, the 125 day moving average, which is the middle line. And you get a bullish signal with a move above the upper band that shows a bullish thrust. This is MasterCard and that lasted a long time. And then you got another bullish signal in early 2019 and you got out with the March crash. And we've got another signal triggering here in the middle latter part of 2020 here, actually the middle part of 2020. So it's on a bullish signal. Again, you're going to get whipsaws. You're not going to be early to the trend. You're going to be a little bit late. But if the trend catches hold, trend following indicators will make money. And the idea is to catch a few good trends to pay for those losers. The fourth indicator is the Keltner channel. And I've got this one set, again, at 125 days. That is the 125-day EMA is the middle line. And then I've got two ATR periods above and below. And I like to keep the ATR period the same as the EMA period, 125. And I'm calculating it from the close. I think normally it's calculated from the typical price there. But we can choose here, and I'm going to choose the close to keep it simple. So this is Google with the Keltner channels, and you are going to get whipsaws. You can see here, you, get, you know, you get a signal there in May, and you get whipsawed out in October. You get another signal there in the early part of 2019. You get whipsawed out in mid-2019. Uh, then you get a big signal and a market crash that we had, and we've got another signal. And you can see the cell is way down here, kind of where you entered. So when you're doing trend following, you may consider about taking some profits along the way if that advance gets too big. I know most hardcore trend followers wouldn't do that until they get a signal. But taking profits is not a bad thing if you have, a, say, a 20% gain on a trend following system 
and then look for another trade. And then the last indicator is the Stoke Close indicator. And again, it's at 125 days. And as with CCI, I'm only using closing prices to calculate the stochastic oscillator. You can go to the chart school and read about the stochastic oscillator for the formula on what it's telling you. I smooth it with a five period moving average and my signal line, a break above 60 is bullish. A break below 40 is bearish. So you can see on this chart, we've got IGV. This is my preferred trend indicator for ETFs. You got a bullish signal there in November and a bearish signal there in late February, and then a bullish signal in May, and it's still on a bullish signal. And it's easy to see with the green shading for bullish, the red shading for bearish. So before we get to the trend composite, just note that I will be speaking on Saturday to the Technical Securities Analyst Association of San Francisco. They are putting on a webinar with a dynamic group of speakers. There you can see them all there. We've got nine speakers lined up for an action-packed Saturday to take you through a lot of technical analysis. So please come and join us. So here is the trend composite in action with NVIDIA, which caught a good trend. You can see that there in October 2019, you had all five indicators on bullish signals, and then you had three triggering bearish on October 11th. And so the trend composite went to minus one as NVIDIA broke its 200-day. And it stayed in the red, even during this consolidation and this higher low, but it didn't get green until three indicators were on bullish signals and one and two were on bearish signals, so it was plus one, and that was in September 2019, and it stayed bullish. Even during that March pullback, it stayed bullish as NVIDIA tested its 200-day, and the trend composite went down to plus one, but it didn't go negative, and the rest is history. Now, when I talk about the 60% losers that you're going to get on average, here is ExxonMobil. And so you can see you would have gotten some bullish trend signals and above the 200-day, but it turned into a loss because it turned bearish there. And you just stayed bearish, and then you get another bullish signal, but it didn't last long and turned into a whipsaw loss. And another bullish signal that didn't work out, and there's a loss. And the even shorter one that didn't work out, but you would have stayed out of ExxonMobil if you'd been following this indicator and not looking for bullish setups. And that's one way I use this indicator is when it's green, then I'm looking for pullbacks and short-term oversold conditions and flags and falling wedges to play a breakout maybe. But when it's red, I just avoid the stock or the ETF. So again, if you want to know more about this plugin, go to the Support Center, Stock Charts ACP, ACP Plugins, and Trend Investor Pro Indicator Edge plugin, where I've got written commentary and chart examples to show you how it works. And next week, we're going to go over the volatility indicators. Very timely, huh? So again, this is Arthur Hill from TrendInvestorPro.com. Please check out my website if you'd like to know more about our offerings, market timing strategy, breath models, and the famous ETF chart book. Thanks very much for tuning in and have a great day. Hey, Grayson Rhodes here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below, maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.